imagine what that moment was. It was, it was not, it was not horror, it was not revulsion, it was not, it was not pain, it was ecstasy. If you could take every moment of joy and delight and pleasure from your life that you've lived and compress it into one moment, and then take all of the joy and the delight and the pleasure from your entire future that is awaiting you, and bring it into that same moment too, that might touch what I felt there. I, was, I wasn't going to pass out because of the pain. It was actually that euphoria of being free, of taking a step towards my family. That was the moment that was the most dangerous. So I closed my eyes, I took a couple more breaths to calm myself down. I picked up my rope. I bandaged my arm as best I could, slinging my arm to my chest. And I turned and I started to walk. I said thank you to that boulder, that can. I moved on into my life, that light waiting for me at the end of the tunnel, as it were, till I step out onto this ledge in the middle of the photograph, 65 feet off the floor of the continuing canyon now, and I have to rig my rope, check my harness, lower myself off, and look up to the sky. Please, God, if I'm going to die, don't, don't let it be in the next minute and a half. I just want to drink a water. And that water at the bottom. As nasty as it looked, it tasted like the sweetest pork wine you've ever had. <laughs> I, it was delicious. I drank three liters of it. I fill up three more liters. I take a photograph of myself holding my arm out to the side of my body to say, I'm still here. I made it this far. And I'm going to keep going. And it was one more step and one more step and one more step to get back to my family, walking seven miles through this open canyon. Much different than what we saw before. Now there's trees, there's greenery. It's wide open, 100 feet wide, 200 feet wide, 700 feet deep, then 800 feet deep. Just one more step, one more step. I turn a corner and out in front of me, 100 yards out, there's a family. <laughs> I've gone six miles at this point. It's been three hours since I amputated my arm. And here's the first human beings that I see. I call out to them, and this takes me a minute. Help! I need help! And they turn, and they, they stop. And then they started running. And then, thankfully, they started running towards me. <laughs> <laughs> but they come up, and I say, My name is Aaron Ralston. I've been out for six days in the desert. I had to cut my arm off. And they gave me their water. We walked together. They gave me two Oreo cookies, all their food at that point. It was a banquet feast. I got all sugar. Is. We came up with a plan. The mom and the son ran off uh, in order to get to the, the, the exit trail, to try to get to the trailhead, to notify the authorities that I was there and needed medical attention. We continue on together. I get up to a point where now my heart is racing. I've lost so much blood, about seven miles, and drip after drip after drip. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to be able to hike out of this canyon now. That Empire State Building in front of me, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. I look to the dad, Eric, and I, I say to him, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to make it. And my heart is pounding so fast. <laughs> and I realize this, he's, he's not looking at me. Eric, is, it, his attention is up at me. It's like waving into the sky, and it's thump, 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 and I finally, I realize, it's, it's not just my heart, but it's actually this, this a helicopter flies above us, lands in the canyon. That might look like a chopper, I know, but that's my mom. She had gotten that call on the fifth day of my entrapment when I hadn't shown up for work for the second day in a row. My manager, my colleagues, they knew me to be responsible. They contacted my roommates who hadn't heard from me. No one had gotten a phone call even. And they knew that I was in trouble. They called my mom. They explained I hadn't shown up for work for the second day in a row. My mom says, you know what this means, don't you? He needs our help. And from that moment, it was go time. She orchestrated the most astounding search and rescue that I've ever even heard of. For not even knowing what state I was in, in 25 hours, they located my truck 
and that helicopter took off from Salt Lake City Airport flying to come get me. Had I been 15 minutes later getting up to the point in the canyon that I did, that helicopter would have landed and been taken off to go refuel. I wouldn't have been back for an hour and I wouldn't be here today. Had I been an hour early, I would have bled to death before the helicopter showed up. The miracle that happened there wasn't just that I did what I did, but it was that my mom did what she did and our paths intersected in this spot in the camp. And the next day, I got to tell her, thank you. She was at the hospital.